There is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis, named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. Had that not been the case, we would not have named it Apophis. We could name it like Tiffany or something, or Bambi. <laughs> you know, something not threatening. This one was headed towards Earth, Apophis. All right, once you discover an asteroid, you gotta wait a little while to get enough of a segment of its orbit to calculate what the full orbit will be to know if it will come in harm's way. So, we did that. We get the orbit. Turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, a Friday, <laughs> Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It'll be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. Now, of course, a much bigger asteroid took out the dinosaurs, but we weren't around at the time. So this is in, in the era of observing the cosmos with technology. This will be the closest, biggest thing we'll ever see come by. Now, the orbit we now have for it is uncertain enough, because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for. The orbit is uncertain enough, so we cannot tell you exactly where that trajectory will be. We know it won't hit Earth. We know it'll be closer than the orbiting satellites. There is a range, a 600-mile zone. We call it the keyhole. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth. 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. So it doesn't matter where it goes through that keyhole. Now, It'll that's if it goes through the center. Uh, if it goes through other places within that keyhole, then the contact point shifts further into the Pacific or closer towards Las North Vegas America. Or something, yeah. Yes. Okay. But if it goes through the center, it hits the Pacific Ocean. Space school. So I'm sorry. I said uh, 13 years after 2020. I, uh, I misspoke. Um, it's April 13th, 2029. And if it threads the keel, it will hit Earth April 13th, 2036. So it's a, it's a um, seven year. The asteroid is going to make the closest approach to Earth around April 13th of 2029. Here's actually what it might look like if you were to look from a distance. As you can see, it passed by Earth without colliding, and its orbit got a little bit deflected as well because of the Earth's gravity. Here's a slightly more interesting simulation that shows you where it's going to pass compared to various satellites orbiting planet Earth. So, as you can see, it actually is going to pass not so far from many satellites. It's most likely not going to collide with anything, but depending on how many satellites we have in those orbits, you never really know, although the distance between these satellites is still going to be in hundreds of kilometers. Nevertheless, this really close passage to planet Earth, first of all, is already being investigated as an extremely important opportunity for us to study these near-Earth asteroids and possibly even the land here but also is going to give us a chance to then analyze the next passage, because the next passage might take this asteroid in the vicinity of planet Earth to the extent where it might become more hazardous. And more importantly, this region where it passes right here, and also this region that you see right here, represents the uncertainty of the location of the asteroid when it passes Earth, but also what's known as a gravitational keyhole. A gravitational keyhole represents the location where if an asteroid passes through, we can then use this keyhole to predict various uh, passages in the future, knowing exactly where the asteroid is going to be. 
And it just so happens that there is actually a gravitational keyhole that if the asteroid passes through in 2029, it might increase the chance of collision in the future as well. In other words, these are areas of space, imaginary areas of space, that if the asteroid passes through, the chance for collision suddenly becomes a problem for us. Whereas if it doesn't pass through this keyhole, then we're totally fine. And in some of the recent studies, especially from this year, the scientists also realized that, well, the thing is, the asteroid drifts a lot more than we initially expected. It seems that there is still a chance it might hit one of these gravitational keyholes, even in 2029, increasing the chance. For so anyway, I was talking to Derek Gilbert on our program about how if I am right, and if Apophis turns out to be the object that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 8, then the original date that NASA gave for the near flyby, aka possibly impact of Earth, is Friday the 13th, April 2029. Uh, and therefore, I was saying to Derek, some people, if Tom Horn's right, then they're going to say, well, then that would make 2029 the middle of the Great Tribulation period because that's when the trumpet judgments it's the third trumpet. are being sounded. And uh, therefore, other people might also back up three and a half years to try to find the approximate start date for the Great Tribulation period. Now, Gary, you and I, we don't set dates. You, you know, know that, that I am not saying, you know, Tom Horn's not prophesying. I'm just saying there's a lot of very strange stuff about the year 2025 that compel me to write the messenger, one of which is the fact that it is three and a half years away from the arrival of Apophis. But here's the kicker. So Derek's listened to me talk about this on our program, right? And he's sitting over there, but he's got an iPad in the back of it's to me, so I don't even know what he's doing, but he's, he's over there doing something on his iPad. Well, what he had done was he had opened a Hebrew calendar, and he had taken the date that NASA gave, Friday the 13th, April 2029, and backed it three and a half years, and he found out that 3.5 years earlier to the day is in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, which many end times scholars believe is one of the likely candidates for either the rapture or the second coming. And we can talk about why that would be true uh, in a moment. But he, he found that it wasn't just the middle of Tabernacles, it was the fifth day. Now you got to understand how this yeah. hit me in that moment. The fifth day of the Feast of Tabernacles was the day that the ancient Hebrews celebrated God, delivering them from the gods of Egypt, right. Apophis of which was the primary god of chaos or of darkness, a satanic figure that wars against the light. They celebrated in antiquity that very day, God delivering them from Apophis. I mean, wrap your mind around that. 3.5 years in 20, uh, to 2029 is exactly the day that uh, Apophis could strike the earth. So, is that a coincidence? Well, the more I looked into 2025, the more I uncovered that there is a lot about four years from now that, that is very ominous looking and sounding. And Tom Horn, not Gary Stearman, not anybody else, Tom Horn is saying, Thank you. Uh, in my opinion, it is more likely than not, and that's the strongest I've ever said, to me, more likely than not, that it represents the beginning of the Great Tribulation period. Revelation 3, 10 and 11, um, and, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning, as it were, uh, a lamp. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the, the waters.